You may be seated. In a moment, we will rise for the Amidah. Rather than a formal sermon this evening, you'll hear a long one tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm saving tonight. Um, instead, some prayer introductions and some stories. In that regard, I have a story I want to share before we rise for the Amidah. To give context to these High Holy Days and their liturgy, there are prayers that are distinctive for these days. The al in which we will tonight, distinctly on Yom Kippur, review shortcomings and how we've used our tongue, how we have been callous of heart. It's as if we are w trying to wake up our hearts or in some sense remind ourselves we weren't good or in some cases even massage our hearts gently. The al -Khayt. There's also a prayer that's done Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur called the Utana Tokef, a prayer that's identified with appreciating the fragility of our lives and the uncertainty of the year ahead. And in that regard, there is a refrain, Uchuva utfila utstaka, repentance, prayer, and righteous deeds, just deeds, overcome the severity of what may yet be ahead in store for us. Tshuva is mi ha'ish. We are given prompts to reflect on our skillfulness in being connected with words to the people we love, knowing that our words are like a hand to put around the shoulder or in some cases wrongly to push someone away. And so throughout these next 24 hours, we will be using words to remind us of the power of both words and silence. For the rabbis, tefillah, prayer, is often identified with what we will do in a moment. Namely, the Amida prayer, the standing prayer, is also called by the rabbis ha tefillah, the prayer. That's where you find both the al and the Utana Tokef. And so a story about the Amida prayer. In Eastern Europe, in the 18th century, there was a great teacher, the Baal Shem Tov, a folk teacher of Torah, of ways often through parable to draw closer to wisdom, to God, to life, to each other. When he prayed the Amida, he did so with enormous concentration. Every syllable, let alone every word, was pronounced with great care as he opened his heart. He could take a very, very long time to get through the Amida prayer, the silent prayer, which we recite at every service in different forms, but always with the same introduction and conclusion. And his followers, his chassidim, his disciples, learned that he was gonna keep taking a while to do his silent amidah. So they, would, they developed a custom, not on Yom Kippur, mind you, but on Shabbat, to go out to the next room and drink a little lechayim, have a little kichel to eat, a little cookie to eat. And so it became the custom that while he was finishing his prayers, they would have a little refreshment. Well, normally, because he was so revered, there would at least be some disciples who would want to bask in his holy presence. But one day, everybody left the room. They came back, and there was the rabbi sitting on a bench with his head in his hands, looking very shaken. They all rushed over, Rabbi, are you okay? What happened? He said, I'll tell you what happened, but with a story. You see, once there was this man, and he longed for this beautiful bird. Mind you, the bird was also a symbol of God's presence. It was both beautiful, but had a quality of freedom, shechina. And he longed to draw that bird close. And one day it was hard, hard to often find or see that beautiful bird. 
There it was in a tree, just sitting quietly. He began to gather his friends. So the rabbi tells his disciples, he gathered his friends kind of like a pyramid. And he was just about ready to reach for the bird when the pyramid collapsed. Everyone left and he came crashing. And so he said, my disciples know that when I pray, I can't do it alone. When I pray the Amidah, it is on your shoulders that raises me toward Shekhinah, toward that elusive presence of God, that bird. When I pray, he said, I need you. When we pray, as we will in a moment, as we rise, we do so on the shoulders of generations before us. Indeed, the words that we will chant will be like an echo across time. Words that were chanted by those on whose shoulders we stand and on shoulders that they stood, a chain that raises up us in our moment of prayer to heights that are beyond our own words both the words that we recite, but more, the spirit of connection to each other in this room, in this moment, serve to elevate. May we rise now for our Amidah, and may we feel connected to each other and to those before us as a source of elevation. <laughs>